So our next speaker that we have to, this evening is uh, Mazi Artur. Um, he's uh, studying at the Shanghai Yangtong University in China, and he's studying on his working on his PhD and plans to graduate in March of next year. Uh, his expertise is focused on the microstructure and, and base modeling of metallic materials, uh, elastic plastic deformation, and laser-assisted surface treatment methods on metallic parts and their welded joints. Uh, it is always exciting to welcome uh, students in who are preparing and entering the, in the field of laser painting. And I'd like to welcome Maziar and making your presentation. So please proceed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your introduction. My name is Maziar Kusain Saiki. I'm a PhD student uh, of Dr. Yong Chang Fu in the University of the Shanghai Jiao Tong University, Shanghai. China. I'm presenting to you my work on the crystal plasticity modeling of the laser pinning effect on the mechanical properties of aluminum lithium friction steel welded joints. My presentation includes the a background uh, and motivation of the research, the explanation of the experiment processes, multi scale modeling, and finally the results and discussion. Uh, aluminum lithium alloys. Uh, have been have uh, long been a crucial part of aerospace industry. The addition of lithium to aluminium has uh, provided beneficial effects such as the high strength to rate, rate ratio and uh, the high stiffness and good weldability. The major strengthening effects in these alloys are the, the secondary precipitate phases, and these alloys have been functionalized in the aerospace industries such as airplane structures, rocket fuel tanks, and satellite service modules. Friction steel welding is a proper uh, welding method for aluminum lithium alloys in aerospace structures. It provides no melting occurrence because it is a solid state welding and it leads to low element loss and low distortion. But the main a disadvantage of this method is the loss of precipitate phases in aluminum lithium alloys in the joint center, which leads to decrease in the tensile properties and hardness uh, of the material at the joint center. So it's necessary to improve joint mechanical properties through post welding processes. Mechanical surface treatments uh, have been uh, utilized for the improvement of material uh, mechanical properties such as fatigue life and tensile properties such as shot pinning, roller burnishing, laser pinning, among which laser pinning provides relatively deeper and more stable residual stresses with less surface damage uh, on the surface. And uh, it's been uh, utilized in the industry such as laser pinning of gas turbine or aircraft usages. And uh, from laser pinning effects on the uh, friction building point, we can uh, see from the previous work the compressive residual stresses, the increase in tensile properties and fatigue properties of FSW joints. We use a uh, crystal plasticity model in this work to include the microstructural evolution during material processing, such as the evolution in precipitate phases, grain size, dislocation density, crystal morphology, and residual stress, and the overall joint heterogeneity effect on the mechanical properties of the joint, such as the tensile behavior and the tensile failure mechanisms. Uh, now going, going to uh, experiments. The friction steel welding parameters are set for the optimum welding mechanical properties uh, laser pinning parameters are set on the 10 joule uh, pulses to uh, induce uh, impacts of uh, four diameters on the surface with 20% overlap. As you can see on, uh, from the picture on the right, laser pinning is applied at the joint center SC at TMAZ, uh, which we observe the higher loss in material mechanical properties. And finally, the tensile uh, specimens are cut from the laser pin sample to observe the mechanical properties. For microstructural evolution, we use the EBST and TEM to observe the grain texture, 
choose some morphology, precipitate fractions, and also observe the dislocation. XRD analysis is used uh, for the measurement of residual stresses and dislocation density, and tensile tests with the corporation of DIC methods are used for the observation of global and local mechanical properties in the joints. Now for the multi-scale modeling. Uh, crystal plasticity modeling includes the crystal lattice rotation and crystal sleep to uh, simulate the microstructure of sensitive material elastic plastic deformation. This leads to the plastic velocity gradient and resolve shear stress on each slip system. And finally, the flow rule, which uh, defines the shear strain rate at each slip system. And uh, then we have the CTFEM model, which includes the crystal morphology and grain texture in poly crystalline material. And we have the physics-based modeling, which includes the slip strengthening effects of precipitate phases, dislocation density, grain size. And finally, we have the total critical resolved shear stress, which is the slip strength, in fact, which uh, is the summation of each of these uh, slip strengthening effects. And finally, the plastic hardening, which includes the uh, variations of dislocation density during plastic deformation, which is related to the current dislocation density and the grain size. Uh, for the CTFEM meso scale and micro scale modeling, we consider the homogeneity of mechanical properties for each welding zone. We consider the symmetricity about the mid axis of the zone and also the sheet uh, thickness. Uh, this leads to the development of joint macro scale model, which is the half the cross section, and CTRVE models, which are the CTFEM models of each zone. Uh, for half of the thickness. And we have the eigen strain model to uh, simulate the laser pinning induced residual stresses. And we have the loading application on the crystal plasticity CTFM models and also macro models to obtain the joint uh, local and global mechanical properties. Each material property defined in the CTFM is assumed to homogeneously be distributed in the particular zone in the macro scale model. Uh, now on the results and discussion. Uh, EBST results include the elongated grain texture uh, and uh, lots of low angle grain boundaries at P6, which is the uh, base metal um, P6 condition of aluminum lithium alloy. Uh, and the HAD, which only uh, goes through the uh, thermal process, uh, has no significant evolution in grain texture. We have seen, we can see the noticeable grain refinement with high angle grain boundaries at PMAD and SC uh, under the thermomechanical process. And we have, see, we can see the texture randomization at PMAD and more noticeably in SC, we can see the completely randomized texture from the dominance of 111 in the P6 material. From the uh, TM observation, we can see a large amount of P1 uh, precipitates, uh, a strengthening precipitate in P6 condition. In HAD, we have, we have partial dissolution of precipitates under the thermal effects. We have the uh, generation of dislocations at PMAT and more noticeably at SD because of the plastic deformation and uh, partial and complete dissolution of P1 uh, precipitates at uh, these two areas. From the uh, XRD of dislocation density analysis, we can see a relatively high dislocation density at P6 condition roll material because of the rolling process. We can see the alleviation of dislocation density at HAV, and we see uh, considerable increase in uh, dislocation density variations at PMAV and SC because of the plastic deformation. And also we can see the texture randomization from the dominance of 111 plane to uh, more randomized texture in the uh, joint center. And uh, CPFM calibration includes 
include obtaining the strengthening microstructural effects uh, and then inserting them into the physics based equations to obtain the, their strengthening effects, such as precipitate, grain size dislocation, and uh, then adjusting model parameters to fit the simulated tensile here to experimental one for the unpinned condition of the oil state, which is the um, aluminum lithium without precipitate, and the T6 condition, which is our investigated material. These are all for on pin conditions. And for joint uh, local tensile properties, uh, for the on pin condition, again, we can see the CTFM well predicts the FSW joint uh, properties at SC, TMAZ, and HAZ. SC shows the, the lowest tensile uh, yield strength because of the dissolution of precipitate and also the randomization of texture that. As you can see, it has the lowest Taylor factor uh, between the uh, among welding joints, and it's followed by the TMAZ and HAZ that uh, has highest yield strength uh, because uh, less uh, precipitates were lost. Uh, but uh, SC shows the highest hardening rate, which is due to the grain uh, refinement in this area. For the residual stresses effect, we can have eigen strain method well predicting the residual stress distribution uh, in depth for three layers of laser thinning and uh, for SZ and TMAZ areas. And from the tensile property evolution, we can see the similar increase in the yield strength and the UTS of the material due to the residual stresses. And uh, for the Dislocation density effects, we can see the increase in the material dislocation density in the near surface area for both SC and TMAZ. And we can see a higher increase for SC because firstly, SC has lower yield strength, which leads to higher plastic deformation on the laser thinning. And also, it has lower grain size, which leads to the higher dislocation density accumulation on the plastic deformation. And it's a slightly higher in the yield strength increase uh, than TMAZ, but dislocation density has no effects on the material UTS, and it only changes the yield strength. And the, from the uh, threesome morphology observation, we can see the increase in 111 and 100 planes after uh, multiple laser thinning of the three layers for both SC and TMAZ areas. Well, and the no noticeable effects on the grain solid can be observed. And from the tensile property evolution, we can see, again, the consistent increase in the tensile property, which is uh, the, uh, relatively lower than the other effects. And it uh, affects uh, consistently the UTS and yield strength. And it's also a slightly higher at that for SC than TMAZ because of the higher plastic deformation. And for the combined uh, laser thinning effects, we can see that uh, crystal plasticity well predicts uh, the material, the joint local tensile property evolution after laser thinning at both uh, SC and TMAZ areas. And we can see the tensile property gap is closing between like a TMAZ and HAZ before it was bigger. And after laser thinning, we can see narrowing down the gap, which is kind of the homogenization effect of mechanical properties. And for the contribution of the laser thinning effect, we have, uh, for example, for yield strength of SD, we have the 60% of the tensile strength increase belongs to the residual stresses, followed by the dislocation density effect at 20 to 25 percent, and the, uh, finally the crystal texture at 10 to 15 percent uh, that contributes to the yield strength increase. For the macro model, uh, we can see first uh, there's a reasonable agreement with the simulated and experimentally uh, obtained results for tensile tests, and uh, we can see overall increase in the joint yield strength and UTS. We have higher uh, increase for the yield strength because of the 
work harder in music that doesn't affect the material use yet, only affects the yield strength. And we have the uh, improvement in the joint homogeneity. As you can see before, we had the uh, highest stress concentration at the TMA CHAD border because of the high heterogeneity of mechanical properties here, uh, which led to the highest strain concentration and failure in this area. And then after multiple laser thinning, we narrowing this gap and avoiding the stress concentration and relocating the strain concentration on the SD area, which leads to the change in the tensile failure mechanism and also the higher elongation after laser thinning. Mazir, we got about okay. three minutes, just to let you know. Oh, oh okay. yeah, oh. And finally, the conclusion uh, includes that we have the uh, dissolution of T1 precipitate, which led to the decrease in mechanical properties. We had laser pinning effect, increasing joint local and global properties. And we have the joint multi-scale model that well predicts the effects of laser pinning of the on the tensor properties. Thank you, Maziar. Uh, nice work with uh, the, the looking at the effects of the uh, heat affected zone and the use of laser painting to address the microstructure. I think I'm um, really looking forward to seeing some of the work that you're going to publish as a result of that.